Hello, everybody. I want to welcome everyone to another show of California Times. My name is Guy Meyer, and my guest today is Kim Elzen, who I have recently met hitchhiking out of the Forest Knolls Valley. She's rescued me, and we've had some conversation about uh, some of her experiences in her career. And Kim, I'm coming away from our little, your, your, your modest little lift out of the valley, thinking that you were a dog whisperer. Is this, among other things, what you do, or how would you describe this? Um, it's what people tell me I do. Uh-huh. Um, I would never have come up with it. I just relate very easily to dogs, have always done so. Like I said yesterday, um, I was pretty much, I raised myself in a dog basket. My mother um, uh, bred uh, Riesen Schnauzers. What a type of uh, you know dog are these? The Schnauzer? Schnauzers? You know, with the, with sort of the square little heads. Well, you have those in big, it's called the Riesen. Uh, giant schnauzers you have them they're this high so we had um every you know as long as i can remember those first years we had five or six of them in our garage uh growing up with mom is this in germany in holland in holland i'm dutch okay yeah. okay and um yeah dogs are so much easier to relate to in the first place they don't talk <laughs> so um you know, you can just be with them. You don't have to think about what they mean, whether they might mean something different than what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Because they don't. They always mean what they are. Mm -hmm. And uh, I find that delightful. And so restful to be with. I can imagine. Yeah. It, um, it's a whole different level sometimes when we're talking to a human being. Well, of course, there's a different level, but, you know, are, are we kind of, do we get on guard, more or less, or we sometimes are... Uh, certainly we can't just... It's just not the same. With the, with the, interpret he, human beings, uh, right? You know, if you, they're sort of... They're, I, I always have the impression that words are often, very often, more of a screen mm. than actually an explanation of what is meant. Mm -hmm. It's what's going on behind the words mm -hmm. that is um, often what is real. As far as I can see, that is. Right. But then I'm half a dog, so I'm not really good at words. You're half a dog, did I hear you well, say? Well, that's, yeah, that's how I feel, yeah. <laughs> People tell me I'm a golden retriever. Uh, is you like that? Uh, does oh, that feel yeah. like it fits what's, you? What's there? Not that kind of. I don't know. Very little to possibly not right. like about it. Right. So that would probably be a, a, a jewel of a pooch to, to like. Um, yeah, uh, you know. Over yeah, I have fond memories of mongrels in general uh, from my childhood and our pet. That uh, they're the best, of course. You know, but. Uh, and the healthiest. Hmm. When you. Um, Let's, all right, let's, uh, see, I've been feeling like I've been in the doghouse spiritually, emotionally a little bit lately. Mm -mm. And I feel like it was like hard to roll out of bed today and like the world, the pressure of things and even this, this little show is sort of sometimes sort of a, uh, an element of what seems like a outsized... Um, ego or what am I trying to, you know, what's the, what's the point or where, where am I getting with this? And, and uh, so can you approach a human being like you might a dog? And what, tell me, how do you approach your dogs actually? Go, oh, let's, let's leave Guy alone for a little bit and go into your dogs. We can come back to uh, me. That's it. You know, I think I do approach, and that's a, a strange question, of course, mm. but I think I do approach human beings like dogs. Mm. I think I do. Mm. Um, and 
well, I don't know where that goes. I have no clue where that goes. Well, but I'm pretty immediate in my mm. in my responses. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I find it very hard to uh, to. I'm not going to say fake because that's not what I mean. But to sort of use tactics. Tactics are totally out of my scope. I have mm. no clue about them. Mm. And and so they don't work on me either. Mm -hmm. I'm noticing that people, if people try to use tactics on me, I'm just going like, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Clueless. Yeah. Um, doesn't work. Mm. And um, I guess I'm very direct. Mm. With my dogs, I'm definitely, you know, there's, there's no, there's no use. There's no sense in in um, doing anything covering anything up mm -hmm. and I'm with dogs so much mm -hmm. and it's just my approach too I don't know whether it's actually actually about dogs because mm. I do it when I'm without dogs as well there's mm. months that I'm without dogs when I'm traveling or whatever um, but I do that with people too I'm very direct and um, without getting into the whole cultural thing here, maybe uh, I don't know whether you want to do that or not. But um, in Holland, people are way more direct mm. than you people here. Really? Oh, California people then? Oh, especially I'm R told it's especially California people. But this is my only yeah. experience of of the U.S. Um, yeah, this is all about they being nice. And I understand the background of that. I understand that. What did you just say? Maybe nice? Or? No, no. Being nice. Being nice. Being nice. And you know, being nice meaning that's not really being nice. That's right. playing nice. Or yeah, being. Um, what can you say? Just uh, not, 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 not uh, challenge anything. Right. Which is right. Do not challenge. Yeah. Do not challenge. Well, I'm not. That's not who I am. I do challenge mm. when I. When I yeah, I do challenge. Why not? What's w I mean? Where I come from, there's no there's no problem with that. You can challenge, and people will take you up on it, or say or say, we don't have the time or not the inclination to to go there with you. That's fine too. Hmm. But it's more straightforward. I think so. so. Yeah, oh. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And when I first came here, that was a big um, adjustment for me. You know, wh wherever I went, and when I was talking to people, they'd sort of, sort of get this rigid smile on their face and walk slowly backwards away from me to, you know, to... <laughs> and I would have no clue what I was doing wrong. But you were giving them some kind of signal that you were... You, somehow you, you were allowing some honesty to uh, yeah. confront them I without... No, I, there's no... I have no reason not to. Well, they may they may have been. Well, I guess it's it's really hard to speak in terms of an abstract situation when you've yeah. gotten so many situations that you've come yeah. across in your life, and each one probably has its own uniqueness. But it is kind of intriguing in to me these kind of um, stressful times of politically that we're here in the U.S. where a political conversation, shall we say, right. has to be done so tenuously. Oh. You have to sort of make sure you're feeling that you're on the same wavelength. Mm -hmm. Dare you say something and cause an, an, an emo emotional outbreak, mm -hmm. really, uh, if it doesn't quite meet with another person's point of view. Yes. I think we're all actually, even if you think you find somebody who you, you agree with, that with a little conversation, you'll find that you probably don't, you know, I mean, it's it's very hard to find human beings who, you know, really agree, you know, when you when you start, what do you think? I mean, am I, it, it's a funny question. Funny? I mm -hmm. think, I think most human beings would agree on basics, mm. you know, apart from, I think we all share this common denominator, denominator of, of humanity mm. and then apart from that we come from a different DNA background or cultural background or historical background or mm -hmm. you know whatever mm -hmm. so those are the differences mm -hmm. 
but I think we all want the same things. We all desire mm-hmm. the same things. We all want ALA, uh, attention, love, and affection. We all want that. You know, that's and not just human beings. I, I think that's what we have in common with dogs. Um, Is that a dog phrase? Is that a dog terminology? No. Have I not heard of that from no, some psycholo- it's a, psychology? It's, no, it's a it's a phrase that I I've just done. Um, I don't know whether I'm supposed to say this, but I've done. I've just done uh, nine days the intensive at um, in Ojai with Byron Katie, the school of Byron Katie. Mm-hmm. Not familiar. With, uh, the name is vaguely familiar, but yeah. tell me what uh, that was. You know, in a nutshell, what that was about. It's about care. it's about becoming aware of your true nature, mm. what you really are, beyond the veils of oh. I need my life to be like this. It's it's about becoming real. Mm. Like, okay, you need this or that, but you don't have it. In my in my um, dictionary, that means you don't need it because you don't have it, and you're existing quite fine, right? Mm. Aren't you? You're just mm. good as you are. You're just sitting there. You're just mm. great. Mm-hmm. Um, so you don't really need it. Mm. You might think so, but it's mm. not true. What makes you think so? Mm. And attention, love, and affection are behind all those needs and and resistance, the resistance that people have to life. That that is interesting. It seems to strike a a chord of uh, you know reality or, or honesty there in terms of what. How does that manifest in terms of uh, attention, love, affection? Um, we all get, hopefully, some of that, um, and yet in, in our world, which may have for many of us too much solitude for some, you know, we might we might feel separated from that. Is are human beings always? Uh, is there kind of an unquenchable thing? Is is there something where they 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 have to? get that they're full as opposed to, you know, like this sense of acceptance or you know, that I you think, are full? I think as long, as long as we are not truly realizing our true nature, mm. uh, which is being mm. beyond the mm. personality, mm. as long as we don't truly, you can, mm. you can have it in your head like, oh yes, I know I am. I have a soul and mm. I'm a spirit or whatever, mm. and all that. But that's just mind, and that can be just wishful thinking. For most people, that is just wishful thinking, mm. because the fear of death, which we don't share with dogs, the fear of death mm. <laughs> is behind all our cravings. Mm. As far as I can see, if you if you know that that this life is inexorably going to uh, and you know and I'm 61 so so mm. I'm over I'm mm. way over half so mm-hmm. maybe I have 20 years left maybe 30 mm. if, I'm, if I'm a very lucky girl um, and then uh, that'll be that that gets scary and um, if you don't have a partner oh my god um, what am I gonna do I'm gonna be alone when I get old and mm. And my life is not working out, and I'm a failure, and I don't have, and I don't, haven't got it made. Um, I don't have enough money. I'm not safe. And what if I feel ill? I mean, yeah, no. What you, what, you know, if you're afraid of that kind of stuff here in here in America, that's scary. What if you feel fall ill? Yes. Mm. All those things. Mm. As if you if you don't fully realize that it doesn't really matter. That that is just the persona and the projection of the light behind it being what you are, then that will go on until your deathbed and beyond, I'm afraid. Mm. That's what I'm afraid of, but I, don't, I can't be sure about that. Hmm. <laughs> For this dog, um, I, in terms of uh, the experience of death, now last week I spoke to an environmentalist who, who believed that the human race was basically on the, the verge of being extinct. And it might be true, uh, perhaps, right? I mean, it's hard, hard to know, it's a, it's a big thing. And uh, you, you spoke in terms of that, the fear of death as being almost, you're su- suggesting a sort of a primary 
fear of uh, in humanity, perhaps when they get a certain age. Uh, really? Every other fear. Yeah. Do you think so? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Still, maybe it's not true. I don't know. No, I don't. I don't. I I, I ponder it too because you know I've I'm into my sixth decade as well and rapidly getting through it, and um, I don't think I think about the fear of death. I I feel like uh, 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 that it's more of a if fears get in there, it's the fear of my own ineffectuality with life, my own inability to um, engage, you know, the, the sort of the, the critical voice in my own mind that uh, is not satisfied um, with, with, with even, let's just say, the, the general social milieu, this, this, this world that we are in, um, I guess that would be my, maybe, maybe death is the ultimate, because you're, you're, you don't think you're effectual and that, you're, you're, that your time is running up, which kind of reminds me of conversations with my dad who passed away about 10 years ago, and, and he also was a, a very external-oriented person driving at his visions and philosophies and felt some frustrations in his old age too that he wasn't able to you know enlist humanity um, into his his uh, idealistic vision and, I, and I'm, I'm to some degree even though I have not followed his completely his notions of what what the perfect idealistic vision might be, I feel like I, I kind of repeat uh, part of his life patterns. But uh, it's interesting to get to a point of um, to being a happy dog again um, with enough of that ALA and um, I guess there was... Uh, for the most part, really, the healing or the healthy part of, of, of being the happy dog or whatever is a, is a creature very alive in the present, right? I mean, just it, that's all there is. The dog is not pondering, you know, anything beyond mm -hmm. the potential for happiness or affection or, or just you would think, no. right? Well, unless, you know, unless it's been severely maltreated. When you come down to it, hmm. you know, the fear, no matter what fear you're talking about, it's always about past, mm. you haven't been ineffectual mm. enough, mm. or future, mm. you're not going to be mm. effectual enough. Mm. Because right now, you're being totally effectual, right? You're, you're here, sitting here, doing what you're doing, love, loving what you're doing, mm -hmm. right? It's, mm -hmm. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. How, where are you being ineffectual right here, right now? If I, I may ask you a question. Um, well, that's a good question, and uh, I, I feel like my, um, this body of mine, I, I, I feel like I, I'm like uh, somebody who vows to turn over a new leaf, and I will uh, be... I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I woke up exhausted, it took me just hours to finally mobilize myself out of, once again, uh, it seems like a, a, a kind of a, a cloud of, you know, gray consciousness that's, despite the beautiful world, you know, I'm just sleep deprived and stressed and, you know, there's a various stuff that's just physical human discomfort okay. and it's annoying and it's is frustrating. Right now, is that true right now? You're, you're <sighs> physical distress right now? Well, yes, yeah, a little bit. True. It is. And it's, it's okay. It's, it's, you know, it is. You, you look perfectly fine to me. Well, thank you. You know, and it's a funny thing because I've had many people tell me, well, I, I go through life, I can go through life feeling um, like, a, like I'm being, and yet people will go, God, you know, 
you're, you know, you're fine. And, and the external pers perspective. The only thing uh, I can think of that would not be fine right mm, now is mm. your thoughts about it. Mm. Oh, you're good. That's right. Exactly right. Of course. Without your thoughts, mm. you're perfectly fine as you are. I know. It's interesting. That's it's fascinating. Wrong. That's wrong with us. And you know, it's a funny thing. I work as a supermarket checker frequently, though I, my, my doghouse situation is somewhat connected to my, my work as well because I find that I, I get too sociable with people and that I do not, have not been good. I've, I didn't really want to be a checker. I just wanted to clink bottles in the wine department. But this is, this is sort of the backstory. <laughs> but I've made a few mistakes with customers that have put the company in a little bit of a, you know, a bind. And, uh, but being up front, no matter if I'm tired or not, with lots of people, I get, I get turned up, I get, I lose my self-consciousness if I'm lucky, not every day, but I can lose that sense of things being not right, or I can I can feel like that things are so full right. that it overcomes any issues of my, you know, ongoing lack of sleep or anything else, because I'm. It's just I get yeah. alive with people or fired up in the moment, right. which is which is great. So but I lose, yeah. So then you lose your need for to control the situation. Yeah. Which has to do with thought. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. You're right. It's you're right, and that's sort of a. I guess really that's sort of a, uh, maybe where so many of my enlightened friends, which I think is like, I think the world has grains of it. You know, I don't want to separate the world That's off. In, big word. In, in, but but the, the same message comes from various perspectives, from no, various really eyes like and... Why don't we, tell know, me. I just, I just dislike suffering. I'm just like everybody else. I just dislike suffering. Hmm. So I do my damnest yeah. to extricate yourself. To extricate. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. I don't yeah. like pain. Yeah. I'm very strange that way. Yeah. No, you're of course <laughs> you're not. It's it's it, yeah, it's so silly. And all. it's silly. And uh, my thinking causes me stress mm. and pain. Yeah. So and I don't need to think in so yeah. many situations. Yeah. You know, I think my thinking is about maybe thirty percent of what it used to be. Mm. And my life is so much easier. Is that something? I have so much fewer problems. Mm. I still have, I'm still living in the same place. Mm. I'm still on about the same amount of money, or even a little less, actually. Mm. But I have no problems anymore. I used to mm. lay awake at night going like, oh my God, how's it going to go? How am I going to survive? I'm not going to make it. Mm. Oh, no. Mm. I don't do that anymore. Yeah. And I'm happy as a clam. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's yeah. and yeah. that's great and that's beautiful and that's simple and uh, it's very, it has uh, to be very simple for yeah me. and it should be that simple yeah I know absolutely it can't be it and can't I know be complicated. and I'm not going to grind right now my thoughts which is tempted immediately oh. to grind well, and say well grind. why isn't it simple for grind me away. blah 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 but of course <laughs> you know it is if you're happy, dare I say I mean it, the is what it is concept of existence has a certain. Um, yeah, but it's it's this. It's loving what is. Love. Oops. Oops. Loving what is. Loving what is. Mm. It not only is what it is. You can just love what it is. And that does happen. It does happen. Yes. And we all have hearts. If you're determined. If we know that it is what it is, if we can accept that, and when we do. Well, what does it give you not to accept that? What, hmm? does it, what does it give you when you don't accept what is? Nothing. What does that give you? Hold on to pain, I guess. Right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Mm. It gives you pain. Mm. Well, I may be simple, but I'm not stupid. Mm. I don't hold on to a hot coal if I don't mm. have to. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, I know, but I, and, I, and I'm just dwelling on guy. Why are you not sleeping at night? Yeah. You know, That's your guy. Being you know why, etc., etc., etc. 
So there are things that we all do. We all, and some of us are slower than others on this uh, path of grasping, um, you know, just knowing how to paddle our own little boat gently down the stream if we there could. There must be something in it for you. Yeah. And, um, but we, what's the word? Um, we measure and we, we, we respond, right? Hopefully. Yeah, to or to react. Uh, react. Or react. Or move, uh, you know. You know, if we, if we blindly react, mm. we, we react from personality and from learned mm. behavioral patterns mm. that will never change mm. if we don't examine mm. them. If we don't inquire into them, they will never change. They will just get deeper and deeper and deeper. Right. And as people get older, you see that too. Mm. They get more stuck, more rigid, mm. more, I know how it is, I know the world. Mm. And they're not happy with it, mm. but that's what they know. Mm. That doesn't have to be. No. It really doesn't have to be. It's it's sort of um... letting go is a is a is a fantastic thing that we can that we can learn from dogs. Today, I saw a dog die, who has been an amazing dog for her for her, her whole life as long as I knew her. And she let go with such grace and elegance mm. um, that is just out of out of this world. Uh, you know, if if people could do that, you would definitely say, "Wow, that's an that's an that's an enlightened being who just went." Hmm. Yeah. How would you define what you saw there to to to, to make it when uh, when? Uh, it's very simple. They don't resist. Hmm. She she held on as long as she could for her mm. for her mom and dad because mm. they really wanted her there mm. and then yesterday there was a crisis and she saw and i saw it happen she saw she couldn't hold on to it anymore and she just thought okay well that's it that, and, and that's it and that was a that was a good life and mm. here i go and and here i go and um and it was just all perfect yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Very evolved for a human being. It would be, but she's luckily just a dog. And millions of um, humans, uh, countless humans, uh, and and continually pass through that portal and uh, yeah, and screaming uh, and screaming and, and kicking. Yeah. Maybe. Or or drugged up. Maybe and maybe and maybe and, and, and maybe just no. yeah. like your dog. Resistance is the painful thing. I mean, mm. dying is not the problem at all. Right. You know, um, it's the resistance against it that makes it so excruciatingly heavy. You think that um, it, the older you get, though, I mean, w with my friends, uh, I haven't had a good talk with any of them, but it. it it, it doesn't, don't you s seem that it's almost like a natural, um, see, when I, when I think of, of being young in 20s and 30s, well, looking at an old person, that's an old person, and the thought of death, well, that's a, you know, wow, you know, you're a young person to die, etc. But my own sense is that it's really, I have so many other things to worry about, which of course I don't, but I mean, I mean, no, I'm just abstractly just touching base on my rather fuzzy brain at times. But that that does seem, um, you know, very silly to be worried about. I mean, it's just so much a part of something beyond your control, for one thing, yeah. and 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 inevitable and the other thing and yeah part of life i don't know yeah that's true no i don't think people worry about death they they worry about it cropping up i mean death mm. here is a great taboo mm. still mm. You, you're not you're not allowed even mm. to see a dead person i've, I've experienced that mm. with people who, who were not family and who died and mm. whom i hadn't seen before their death and i mm. would like to say uh to say goodbye and to see them one more time. Well, you gotta go through a whole rigmarole. You gotta have a, this, you know, a signed thing from a family member, and even then, they really don't like you to do it. 
you, you're not supposed to look at death. You don't, you're not even supposed to mention death. Mention mm. death when you're drinking, when you're having a beer with somebody in a pub and, and, and there's a conversation. Try and mention death. People ignore you completely. I've tried that more often than not. Mm. They just don't hear you. Mm. You can say death, death, <laughs> death. They don't hear you. Well, it tends to very, be a, very it tends to be may, maybe uh, <laughs> and not the die, subject necessarily people want to talk about at that moment. No, but on the other hand, I mean, you could probably have a very uh, <laughs> a, a charming and and and, and happy uh, conversation if you were to deal with it. I su I suppose. But maybe they really didn't want to think about that at that point because that really is sort of the the whole uh, kind of against the whole idea of uh, of having a drink and being with friends is to to be alive. But the, all right, so okay, yeah, to talk about death is to like talk about. I don't even want to say it, but the word God. I mean, nobody, you know. I mean, that's 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 sort of like. I mean, Let's forbidden say dog, too. Dog, dog turned around. Okay. Do it that way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, what does it mean? Um, jump back to your dogs. So you've built a little. <laughs> I'm going to take it right back to a very <laughs> earthy, practical level here right. for a second here. Um, you've been living in the county for quite a while. Yeah, for 21 years. Wow. And you you truly make a, a, a little bit of a. A living? Uh, I truly do. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So people could, I, you know, I can throw out your email or something like this yes, at the can. end of the show, yes, and they could uh, drop you a connection if they have a, a yeah. dog that yeah. uh, there's, there's want, they want a problem with your dog. If problem with your dog, dog that has behavioral issues or that you sort of scratch your head about, like, why is he doing this? Hmm. Why is he always doing this? Uh. I don't want him to do this. Hmm. Then, then um, I can try and see why he would be doing it and how we can help him not to do it. Yeah. And 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 apparently, you see some results from that. Are the people wouldn't oh, yeah. be uh, you wouldn't be finding no, a, a no, continual you, amount you of work. Great results. You know, it's 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 again it's A L A. If, if a dog, like a person, if they feel they're really understood, that's half of the solution. Hmm. As long as they beat their head against the kitchen door because you don't get it. And for instance, there is this dog that I just recently worked with that um, is a middle-aged dog who's five or six years old, and he got hmm. a little puppy sister, and very cute little puppy sister, and, and um, puppy got all the attention all of a sudden, of course, and way more than him by now and not only that he could live with that but she also got to drink out of his bowl got to sleep in his bed um, his whole life was taken away from him at, in one in one go mm. so his and he's a very good be, you know obedient dog so he didn't start peeing and pooing all over the place but he started having these quirks like I don't want to drink out of this bowl anymore and I don't want to sleep in that bed anymore and uh, more of that sort of stuff and people were going like why does he so why mm. doesn't he it's very simple he he wants his own stuff mm. he wants his own stuff back he wants his life back mm. and once once he saw that I understood that he that he got that that she got another bowl somewhere else and that she got another bed somewhere else, um, that made that all in itself makes a huge difference. All of a sudden, he's going like, okay, here's my, here's my, and then he could take care of her again because he was getting a little nippy with her. Mm. Um, yeah, it's important to, how do you say that? It's like with with people. You leave them their comfort zone. Mm. You don't take their comfort zone mm -hmm. away from them. Mm -hmm. If you do that, they get upset and they have all these strange things that mm. they come up with mm. to show you that they are upset. Mm. That's interesting, and I, I think in terms of uh, the you know the the commonality of I think of uh, animal psychology and. Dog psychology. Now we like to look at all these animal videos that that show animals to have a, you know, either 
intelligence or compassion or things that we didn't ordinarily see, right? But also we, I mean, humans react like animals too. We have our own defensiveness that can be uh, like like your pup there. Uh, seem some people might say is is selfish, but it's sort of a, a reactive process. I have many times the experience of walking down the road, and a a dog will bark from a yard or whatever, or even coming in the other direction, and the owner will be like seems to me like way overreact, like, you know, shout at the dog or yank, yank the leash or like how to punish the dog for barking, which it, to me, I, I don't, it doesn't offend me that the dog wants to bark at me. I feel like, you know, the dog is trying to do its, uh, its, its job. Um, I think... If you don't want somebody to bark, you should get a cat. Huh? Yeah, but I, I guess, I guess <laughs> I was just trying to draw my delusions of all the docking, the barking humans these days and the, and the comfort zone too. It's a, it's a kind of a, gotten to be sort of a bit of a crowded planet and there are a lot of people and we have to um, acknowledge, I think, to some degree that everybody is it's jockeying for, jockeying for their comfort zone. Yeah, trying that's to, true. That's true. And still, it's all in your head, of course. Well, to some degree, and to some degree, we 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 are, have to see in terms of the biological. Like my friend who was talking, who was a uh, I say my friend, this person I met, a uh, conservation biologist, uh, that there's implications of ecosystems and implications of uh, the, this yeah. stuff. So, even though. You, it might seem like just a simple sense of adjustment. It's also maybe a certain sense of what actually um, is appropriate. I mean, you know, what what actually um, serves uh, an organism in terms of uh, I, you know who, who's to say? I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't make these judgments, abstract judgments about uh, things like uh, quote too many people or or density or or urban living or this this stuff but we are there's forces at work uh, yes and um, but that's also out there huh? I don't I don't do that kind of stuff in my head at all mm. I'm like I said I'm from Holland and Holland mm. is way denser populated mm. than Marin mm. so I personally have all the room in the world mm. there's where I live Mm -hmm. is where you live, mm -hmm. there's nobody. Right. So I'm all good. And you know, I think the only way to be effective mm. in whatever challenges arise in mm. the outer world that you might, you mm. know, if you want to help the planet, mm -hmm. if you want to help your environment, mm -hmm. the only way to really do that is to stay sane. If you get angry and mm. upset in your head, you're just adding to the war totally. on the planet. Exactly. I know that. And yeah. and um, I for one refuse to go there because yeah. as you know, war out there I can I can live with, I can mm. deal with. Mm -hmm. Up until now anyway, let's mm. we'll see, but right now mm. I'm totally fine. Mm. But war in my head mm. I can't live with. Mm. It makes me unhappy. Right. Well that's one thing that I will not have. That I get unhappy. Mm. That's my responsibility to keep me sane. Mm. And I'm not allowing this world to drive me crazy. Mm. It's not. It's not happening. Beautiful. Well, I I feel like I'm a bit. Um, I drive myself crazy with the world, and I feel like I overcome that occasionally, and I feel like it's potentially there f for me to. Um, deal with it and not be driven crazy. Uh, crazy. Um, I think honesty is, you know, a valuable thing. And um, I think that um, we can all be a little crazy and it's okay. And I think we've, to me, my work is square on my own shoulders, and I don't need to be a person who 
you know, is, is somehow carrying a, a pain that's frustrating or, or, or constant. There's no, there's no, no one but me who, who uh, you know, there's just no, nothing else externally responsible for that but me. I know that. I don't know what I'm getting at. I, I, it's, it's been a great conversation. Um, I, feel, I feel very fortunate and lucky to have your company, uh, Kim. I, I'm, my guest has been Kim Elzen. I, I said it correct, didn't I, Kim? Yes. And you have just written a book as well? Or is I it am writing. I writing, am writing a, a book. story. I don't know whether it will oh. ever be a book. Okay. But I'm writing a story about my dogs here mm -hmm. in Marin County. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the working title is um, I Am Dog or um, The Joy of Simple Being. Because that's the only true joy there is, as far as I've found. If, if, if you find another, let me know. <laughs> um, this, is, this is the one that always works for me. That's great. Yeah. I, I, I look forward to seeing some form of this, whether it's a, the story or a, I'll, a book. I'll send or it to you. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, it's been a pleasure. I'm Mine so too. glad you made it. Yeah. Thank okay. You. Cheers Thank you very, very much. Okay.